Hey everybody. My steel chainsaw started acting up again. I've got the classic clogged carburetor symptoms. Or bad, you know, problem with fuel lines or carburetor, that kind of thing. Um, but the thing is, this has got new fuel lines in it from about a year ago. New fuel filter. Um, I put a new carburetor in this thing. So it's been really good for the most part. And when I first fired it up this spring after fixing the broken trigger, throttle trigger, it seemed okay, but then the next time I went to use it, it just started to bog down. Uh, it's been sitting for a little over a week now. I haven't had time to mess with it. I've just been using my Husqvarna saw, which is bigger and heavier, so I don't like it for just light work. But um, my friend actually borrowed it. I wanted to get some stuff done today. So I gotta see if I can fix this saw. First I'm gonna see whether or not it's even acting up. I put some fuel, uh, some Startron fuel stabilizer stuff in there and sometimes that'll actually, if you let it sit and work it through the system, it'll actually sometimes clear a blockage. So if that's what it is. So we'll see what's gonna happen here. If it uh, doesn't act up, well then you'll probably never see this video because I'll just erase it. But if it does act up, what you'll see is, you'll see that when I give it full throttle, it bogs down. And if I hold it at full throttle, it will just die completely. If I give it part throttle, then it'll rev up and stay running, but it'll have no power. So. symptom. Let's tear into it, see what we can find. Alright, so I'm going to treat this video as if no one's ever seen me take one of these apart before, I've never taken one of these apart before. So, first step is you just flip this lever and pop this outer cover off. Next, you take your air filter out, took that out. Obviously, if that's dirty, clean that. And then uh, next step is you remove these two little nuts. I like using this little quarter inch drive ratchet. It's small enough to sneak in there past the handle here. And then also of course you can use a nut driver if you've got the correct size. And that just slides off. My nut fell down in there. I'm going to grab that before I forget about it. Okay. Now, what I found to make removal of this carburetor easier, I found that if I pop this cross lever out of its right hand clip carefully that I can move this and disconnect this linkage on the throttle uh, te technically this is the uh, choke linkage actually you wiggle this, le there we go, wiggle this lever free, uh, this cross piece free I don't think you're getting a shot of that Alright, so this is this cross piece that I'm talking about here. The shaft that this lever rides on. It clips in right on this side, so you carefully pop this up. Get it out on this side. That allows, you can see the throttle linkage practically falls out when you do that. And then you could slide it over enough to disengage this, chuck link, uh, this choke linkage. Now, if you cl unclip this little brass kill switch, wire uh, pin. You can actually take this off completely but you don't need to. You can just move it out of the way. 
take the linkage, rotate it up, and that will come right out of the uh, choke butterfly shaft. Now, the only thing keeping the uh, carburetor from being able to be completely removed is actually the fuel line, which is right here. Now this fuel line is a special line. Daddy. Yeah! I'm trying to work on it right now, Mark. What happened to it? I don't know yet, Mark. Can I come down there and watch you? What? Can I come down there and watch you? Uh, I guess so. Can I get off of good, yeah, good idea. Wear shoes. Okay, so uh, where was I? I was saying this this fuel line is actually a special uh, fuel line because it's got an integrated grommet that actually fits into the tank. And um, this line, the uh, E10 gasoline can destroy it over time. So uh, it can cause it to get really mushy and collapse on you. And what will happen is it'll, it'll uh, as the, as the carburetor is trying to, as the fuel pump section of the carburetor is creating a vacuum and trying to draw fuel up from the tank, that line can start to collapse on itself and restrict the flow of fuel. But I just replaced that, I think, last season. Should last longer than that. That's a special part through steel, obviously. So if you get the carburetor back all the way off the studs, and then now I can remove this line. It's a barbed fitting that keeps this captive on here, so you've got to kind of push it off of that fitting. The other dead giveaway is if this line is 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 trashed, wow. That was under vacuum, clearly, as soon as I let that line off, fuel came gushing out of it. Uh, what I started to say was if this line comes off really easily, then chances are this rubber is already trashed and mushy. This feels really good, so, which is what I expected, because like I said, I just replaced it. Alright, so, now I can move the saw out of the way, give me some more room here on the bench. Mark, what on earth do you have? It's a flute. Hmm. Flute is not good for carburetor repair. <laughs> Need a clean rag or cleaner. I'm trying to get as much of the dirt on the outside of the body of the carburetor off ahead of time so that when I open the carburetor up I don't get all that dirt inside there. <clears throat> So there's two sides of the carburetor that can be opened up basically. There's the uh, fuel pump side and then there's the um, metering side. And I prefer to go after the fuel pump side first because that's, you know, your fuel enters there and oftentimes that's where you're going to find your, your blockage. But as long as we're in here, we're probably going to take both sides off. Okay, so got a very small area of clean on the bench. Make sure we're still on the camera. Okay, we're still on the camera. So now I want to grab a uh, proper size regular screwdriver. Excuse me, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Stand right there when I come by here. There you go. Then you can follow me right back when I go back. Alrighty. That doesn't feel right. Why is that so tight? This is exactly the kind of situation where the screwdriver can slip on you and gouge you in the hand. Alright, plan B. 
Oh, it's right here, Mark. It's on the corner of the workbench. I didn't even see it. Yeah, fix the bicycle chain. No, I got it. I have gas on these gloves, and that's transferring to these tools. Your hands are going to smell like gas, which isn't good. Plenty of gas here in the carburetor. The uh, tiny screen that's in here that's responsible for making sure nothing gets from this side of the carburetor to the uh, other side is almost perfectly clean. There's a little tiny bit of something, but not enough to explain what we've got going on here. So I just did it. I just carefully fished out that whole screen. Yeah, that could be cleaner. That ain't the that ain't the culprit. What are you doing, Mark? All right. Got this oriented right now, so the port on the top is facing the right. Oh yeah, there we go. What is that stuff, Daddy? Chunks of stuff. Chunks of debris. What's debris? Debris? Yeah. Trash. So what we got right here is just some little bits of organic material that have gotten in here and what they could be causing is they could be causing a problem where this diaphragm is not able to move as freely as it should it's, the, it's all theoretical now do I want to open this up and take a peek underneath yes I want to take a peek underneath but I've got to worry about um, tearing that diaphragm. So we're going to take a real careful pull on this and see. Better yet, we use a, over there, use a razor blade. What's a razor blade? Huh? What's a razor blade? Really sharp little, uh, metal blade which uh, when used properly can be very handy but when used improperly can be very uh, yes. dangerous and cut you. There we go. Someone just flushed the toilet. Nobody flushed the toilet, it's the dishwasher finishing a cycle. What's on there? So we hold this up to the light and we want to see if I can see any light shining through, and I don't, so there's no holes in that. This tab faces that way. I'm going to put this down right here. Alright, now, at this point, I want some magnification. Move on back. I want to get a really good gander. You know what a gander is? I think it's a male goose. But also, gander is slang, I think it means look at. Boy, this is really dirty. I should clean that at some point. It's something better than an oil and gas soaked rag. I have mine upstairs. Do you really? Yeah. Stop showing off. All right. I don't see anything in there. That could not be cleaner. I'm beginning to think the problem is not in this carburetor, unless that little bit of debris on top of the diaphragm was enough to actually cause the problem. Which I guess is possible. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. 
because there's another possibility that I had thought of later, which is the uh, can that I've been filling this chainsaw with. That fuel is from last season. And they may have gotten some water in there. Did I just say that right? Some water may have gotten in there. Could have fuel. Could have fuel. Could have water in the fuel. Put this all back together. Try it again. If it does the same exact thing, we're going to drain off the fuel into a clean jar and see if it looks contaminated. Probably should have done that first. It didn't occur to me until after I had started already digging into this. Who are you talking to? Myself. About what? What's in this bag? I'm trying to remember what's in the bag. Dead kitten? <laughs> I know, but... Rotten potato salad? <laughs> I know, put that in there. Hmm? I know, put that in there. You'd I'll never put, put that in there? I'll put something that plays music in here. A Victrola? No, I'll put, I will put a hangman in here. Hangman? Hang, you're using Hangman to play music? No! That's hangman. pathetic. Want to play music? No, you don't. Where's your MP3 player? Mine? Yeah. I don't need them. I can use it off my Nintendo. If, don't take your Nintendo up down here. Put this carburetor back in. Daddy, you have like a billion in here. Like, Dollars? No, a billion rolling rods. Mm, yeah, not really. Not even close. How much is it? I don't know. I don't know how much that was when it was full, but it was open when I got it. Actually, I don't think they count them. I think they sell them by the weight, by how much weight. So. I couldn't tell you. I think they sell them by the pound. So many pounds in a box or something like that. That's pretty No, 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 no. Put those back. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Leave those alone. What was I doing before you interrupted me? I'll probably get this linkage on first. The throttle. Throttle's in. There we go. Okay. So now I double check the. Oops. Yeah, perfect example. Why well, you gotta double check the operation before you put this all back together. Alright, so throttle linkage is working correctly. And then the way this works is when you flip this down, you should keep the throttle open part way and it does. And then that's part way and then that clicks back. That's exactly how it works. And to make life easier, you have that in a down, full choke start position. And that allows you to very easily, well this wire sits right in this groove right here. That allows you to very easily, I don't remember that wire being that way. Why is that in the way now? Let me get the sawdust off the back of this. Get them both on and started before I bother tightening the other, tightening either one of them up. 
mainly because if I end up dropping a nut and I need to take this apart to get to it, I don't have to do a ton of work to get to it. And you're not going to go hog wild on these things. These are only very little, like, cheesy nuts that are clamping against plastic of the housing. Daddy. Yeah. So what was the problem of that, of the chainsaw? Well, I found a little bit of junk debris in the carburetor, but... It wasn't in a part of the carburetor where I expected to find anything that would cause a problem, so I'm still not sure. But what we'll do is we'll go out and we'll try it again. Mm -hmm. And uh, see how it acts. It's my own pliers. Now it's working correctly, okay. Just double checking my linkage one more time. Seems okay. All right, let's go try it. Yeah, keep your fingers in your ears, Mark. Same exact thing, so I'm gonna check my fuel. I'm gonna take this relatively clean glass jar. Fuel looks good, clean as a whistle. Hey. Yeah. No. Why are you working up here? What? Are you going to take this thing apart? Daddy? Not right this moment, no. What? Not right this moment, no. What was that? Uh, fuel filter. What's a fuel filter? I don't know. You're standing in the camera view there. Hmm. It still looks fine. Something else is wrong. Must be a blockage in that carburetor that I didn't see. Daddy, what color is um, gas? Normally? Yeah. Normally it's kind of on the clear side. This is tinted blue, bluish green because it has a uh, special oil mixed with it. Mm. Put your fingers in your ears and stand back and try it one more time. Another thing I can try before I go take this apart again. There is a uh, mixture screw in there, and uh, I can try and adjust that. Now, since I haven't touched it since the last time it was running perfectly fine, it shouldn't be a problem of an improper adjustment. But sometimes, if the blockage is right where that orifice is, sometimes just adjusting the screw in and out will let that little piece of junk free itself, move along down the line. All right, fingers in the ears.
Carburetor's gonna have to come apart again. Why? Because none of this is working. I need you to go check and see the time it is. All right. You already watched me take this apart once, so I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna take this apart quickly. Of those girls are a big box of them. I know where they are too. Where? In that cabinet. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think put them there? Yeah. You know those big giant boxes are those filled with those? Yes. Little boxes? Yes. How, how did he get them all? Hmm? How did he get them all? Fate. Luck. Luck shined upon me one sunny day. So you're going to have to take the whole carburetor off? The whole thing with jigger? The whole, you have to take the... Thing with jigger? So you have to take the thing part? The whole entire thing? You bet. I don't know if how it's going to get, get real. What on earth did you just say? I can rebuild it. Look at that water bottle. You might as well have just taken a hammer and beaten on it. I didn't beat on it. <laughs> okay, can you hand me a hammer? Bye. Bye bye to baseball. Is it cold down here in the winter? Daddy? Not too bad. I remember when I was a baby, like a little kid, and I remember this, this place was, was so clean. <laughs> it's not anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's because nothing ever was done down here or worked on or anything when you were really little.